Hello everyone, I'm Øystein Hansen, and among other things, I'm a sticking pole operator and I've been an active part of the Carano community since 2017. Uh, today, I have the great honor of having with me uh, Dr. Mihela. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, and Mihela, she's a beloved community member. I think she have had the presentation on governance in all of the Cardano summits previously. Uh, she has advised uh, governments, she has advised industries, and uh, she's an author of many papers on governance. Uh, so I am really honored to have you here today with me, Mihela. Thank you so much. Yes, likewise, the honor is mine. I'm yeah. so happy to, to have the opportunity to talk to you about this. Yeah. So... Um, before this uh, interview, uh, I sent a few uh, questions to Mihela, and she's also prepared a bit presentation material. So uh, we will try to uh, go through a few questions. Uh, but I want to explain to the viewer first, like what is Catalyst, uh, because this topic is going to be like governance beyond Catalyst. So not all viewers are familiar with Catalyst, perhaps. Um, that's why I think we should start there. So. Catalyst uh, for me is uh, basically um, a way to interact with the treasury on Cardano. So every epoch or every five days, there's a, a collection of uh, rewards and 20% of those rewards goes to the treasury. And currently this is uh, quite a large sum in this treasury. It's over, uh, well over a billion ADA. So there's a lot of monetary value in this treasury. And, and governance can be so many things, but one thing governance can be is uh, how to spend resources wisely and how can you as a community and groups come together to, to think about how to spend resources. And, and this is part of Catalyst. It's a, a, a form of platform on ID scale, uh, it's called this platform, uh, where you interact uh, with projects, people can propose projects, there's like this time period and some are reviewers, we call them advisors. And then we have reviewers of the reviewers that's called veteran advisors. And um, we have also um, this form of a group that can help with creating proposals. And finally, we have most of the ecosystem, it's the voters. So every roughly quarter of the year, uh, finally you have this vote and some uh, projects are uh, uh, founded because they come over our voting threshold and some projects are not founded uh, maybe because there was not enough budget left or because they did not reach this voting threshold or there was not enough vote for them. Um, so, so this is like how we currently look at governance uh, or one part of governance on Cardano uh, called Catalyst uh, and how we try to spend resources efficiently to to um, to develop projects. Uh, I hope that was not a too long explanation, Mihela. So, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, let's move on then to um, a bit about your papers and all of the the wonderful research you have done on this topic. So, uh, for me, um, your paper on organic governance it's uh, also discussing like uh, how can we deal with complexities. And I have to say, as a voter on, on Catalyst, um, it took me five days to go through all of the proposals in, in, in Catalyst. There were so many things to read. And it's such an overwhelming task for me as a voter in, in, in such a system. Um, so I, that's one of the things I want to discuss is like, how do we deal with these complexities? So, uh, I guess my question, if I can phrase it, um, is could you first try to explain to me what is this organic governance that you had in your papers? And and uh, do you think like this holonic, I hope I pronounced it correctly, holonic systems uh, are suited to deal with complexities, such as this overwhelming amounts of information you have in Catalyst. I don't think it's just Catalyst who have this problem. It's a problem of the information society we are in now. There's more and more information. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I uh, really am curious to hear from you, Mihela, because I, I think uh, you have a lot of insights from all of your years looking at this. All 
I thank you so much again, uh, Einstein, for inviting me here and uh, for enticing me to this conversation, which uh, I think it's a very important conversation right now for our community. Um, I also would like to, you know, frame the question sure. and uh, maybe reframe a bit the context. Yes. So um, if we look at Catalyst as a, let's call it a peer production system in which from a governance perspective, the peers are coming together to make a collective decision about how to spend the precious treasury, which yes. they collectively own, yes? So if we look at it from this perspective, we also have to define the goal of this community, the overall arching goal of the Catalyst community, right? So, and then look into, is the goal clear to everyone? Are there any conflicting interests of any individual or any maybe subset of the community with the overall goal? So now, before I answer your question, I'd like to ask you and turn around the tables. Sure. What is for you the goal, the overarching goal of Catalyst? Uh, and, and I will give you a few of my takes because I have interacted with the community and with Catalyst as a community advisor, and I have my own experience there and my own pain points and feedback. Uh, but from the perspective of the goal, yes, I can look at it, let's say, as um, a way of uh, putting the treasury in the service of the community in order to develop, to make Cardano the best technologically available blockchain in the known universe. <laughs> or I can make Cardano uh, the most uh, impactful and impact blockchain in which I change the world from this perspective. I mean, I will only fund projects which are shifting the mindset, which are shifting and putting energies into making the world better. Whatever that is, but we will have to define that as well. Mm. Or I can have both. <laughs> so what is it to you? Maybe it's a different one. Yeah, this is a very, very interesting question because... I think the goal is so different for so many different people. Mm -hmm. We we have our own objective our, uh, view of it, and there's also many different other subjective views. So for me, uh, it is this um, real five is one thing that real I'm really passionate about. This uh, thing that we can try to create financing that helps the developed world. That's that's something that real I'm really interested in. And I think I cannot limit myself in voting to only those type of projects. I feel also like if there's a project that doesn't make financial sense, but can make huge social sense and also then create adoption of Cardano, then this for me is also something. So when I judge for impact, and actually impact was one of my own criteria for, for voting. I made like a list of uh, what I would vote for during those five days. And impact for me is much more than financial impact. Uh, we need financial impact, but we need also product that creates uh, different uh, groups, adoption, it uh, it creates um, uh, cultural value because Cardano is also a culture. It's, uh, it's part of an ecosystem. So I, I think that's a very hard question to answer for me. You know, what exactly mm -hmm. do I look for in and, every And book? this is exactly my point. My yeah. point is, I think it's a question which maybe not all the members of the community have asked themselves, or maybe they did. But maybe for many of them, it's a hard question to answer. But maybe for the, for many of them, they already answered it. I just wanted to say thank you for choosing RealFi because the RealFi is an excellent example of fulfilling both, yes, the technology aspect of Cardano and the impact. Because so that if I, if, if I want to build the best technology for RealFi, then I'm going to change the world by developing that and deploying it in uh, in, uh, in the world, right? <laughs> so so that's a very good example from the perspective, at least of my own interest, is Cardano, and of most people in my you know sphere. Uh, but of course, that doesn't mean that others don't have to have other, uh, or I'm sure they have other purposes, and as such. We have to define, yes, also in order to talk about organic governance, whatever that is, <laughs> this buzzword. Yes. We need to define the roles and the kinds of work that these people are going to do in order to achieve that. So let's take real fire as an example, right? So now, uh, so we have, we want to make Cardano the real fire to go blockchain in the world. Yes, and everybody who wants to deploy that, come to Cardano. Okay. 
then what is the role of the catalyst community here? And the roles are split. My role is a community advisor. It has been for a long time. Uh, in order to explain this, can I just thinking maybe it would be good to share my screen? Sure. Um, if you don't mind. Okay. So uh, let me try to do this. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see it. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so let's come back to the example which I mentioned. Uh, so we are now part of the community. I'm a community advisor. You are, uh, let's say, a participant in the community, a voter. Others can be, of course, also reviewers for uh, for Catalyst. So. Um, what I'm showing here is an example of collective decision-making in order to achieve a higher level goal, which is encountered in nature. And this is like the ants colony, right? So the individual ant doesn't see the overall purpose. They even don't see it. And that's why it's not so critical for us, let's say, not to really understand the overall purpose, although I hope no, we, have to, we can understand the overall purpose because we can implement a lot of technologies for us to enable us to understand the overall purpose here, which is to find the shortest path from the nest to a source of food. But there is a, this peer production going on. The individual ants are working together in order to, number one, find the shortest path, and number two, of course, bring the highest amount of food to the nest. Mm. Uh, in this case, if we make this, let's say, parallel, because you now entice me to talk about organic governance, I'm talking yes. about now well, one way of implementing it. So let's say we have voters and we have community advisors, and then we have um, reviewers Advisors. and so on and so forth. Yes. I'm not sure that Catalyst um, has the maturity right now to actually um, reward the work of everyone involved with different roles. And I can tell you one thing, yes. So uh, just reviewing a proposal, sometimes it can take hours. I yes. mean, the proposals are sophisticated. Uh, then on the other side, you know, I want to do my due diligence. Are these people have, do they have the right experience? Will they do the work? Uh, then I also have to consult literature sometimes if I not a total expert in the area, but I know something, but then I will need to go to websites and so on and so forth. So in order to really make the right decision, it's a lot of work. And I'm not sure that this is being rewarded. I mean, for me, I, I've never been rewarded for being a community advisor. I didn't get anything except for recommending or referring projects. And um, I do not know your experience. I tuned a bit, like uh, for example, propose uh, advisors. I think they need to do 200 uh, reviews or something like this to, as a limit to get a reward. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. Catalyst <laughs> are holding out a few reports, but but yes. you so, so, so there is a problem there yeah, with yeah. you know the amount of work and the reward. Yeah, so that's one. But mits, we mits, can mits. think of it also differently. Yes. So my point here is, if the reward, let's say I'm one of these ants, and my overall purpose is to actually perpetuate my species. And that means bringing the food to the queen at the nest. So the queen can actually lay those eggs and perpetuate the species. Then I really don't care because there's a lot of work and self-sacrifice that I will have to do there. And then my own reward may just be, or just be, which is a big reward actually, the fact that I can contribute, I can bring my contribution to this overall purpose. And then if my reward is to bring my contribution to the overall purpose of changing the world through real FI, then it's fine. I'm gonna spend hours and hours and this is my life until probably I will not have what to eat. And then, you know, because if I'm not rewarded for my work. <laughs> so, so, you know, and that is the self-sacrifice, yes? How much am I willing to self-sacrifice and do I really need it? Do we, can we tweak the system a bit? Mm -hmm. And here is where I think the, so-called science of organic governance can come into the picture. Because here we can, uh, in organic governance, we can actually uh, combine the top-down goal setting, yes. which, yes, let's say the community comes together and sets the goal, or maybe the queen or the noble leader, whatever that is, and you know, I can talk about that also. But let's say we have the, the, the goal, and then how do we orchestrate our effort to achieve the goal 
And that means some rules are going to emerge from these individual agent interactions that are going to optimize achieving the goal. And I think this is what is happening with Catalyst right now. It is, we are experimenting with finding the right rules which are emerging from our collective efforts. Absolutely. Maybe I feel frustrated, oh, too much work and no reward, I don't want to do it. But then I'm thinking, oh no, I really want the world to change with real five. This is a higher uh, impulse which I have. And yeah, you I'm see thinking that maybe circle. many okay. of our uh, community members are like you, you know, are grappling with the same dilemma. Okay, I will stop sharing. Please go on. <laughs> no, uh, I wanted to follow your point. Uh, uh, and uh, we see this in Catalyst Circle. There's proposals for how we can uh, help uh, fund and review efforts by groups. Uh, we see this in the advisors and how they're coming together to uh, create rules for how do we review proposals. Uh, I think this is really part of the organic governance and it needs to get to like a critical level. It needs to have enough people working on it. And then we will see this form of rules start to uh, appear where we also can deal with complexity. So you mentioned we need to go bottom up instead of top uh, down. So for example, what if you look at Norwegian projects and maybe we have a local Norwegian community that could try to review and look at this. We can suddenly break down these complexities um, so uh, I think really this type of um, systems, uh, and as I read your paper and how I understand it, it's like these are always forming in nature and th this is a really a, a natural way of doing things. Not everyone needs to know the, the higher purpose or uh, as the queen, for example, but we, we all need to have some form of shared goal, a goal state we want to reach for. Uh, and as long as we have that, we can be different. We can have different ideas of what Catalyst is, but we can come together and uh, work on our goals with others who are like-minded as ourselves. So I, I think you're really onto something here with how we can evolve Catalyst and, it, and it's happening really. So I'm optimistic. I, I see this as like, yeah, it's a slow process, but the ball is starting to roll now and we're really growing step by step. So this is uh, my view of this. Um, but I, I wanted to move on to another topic because uh, there's so much I want to cover and the time is really flying here. Um, so uh, for me, maybe uh, another important topic is like, uh, how do we generate trust to each other? How can I trust an advisor or a reviewer? And I, I know you have done a lot of research on, um, on, on trust and reputation systems. Um, uh, for for example, um, the the work you did with Senab Nurian, I hope I said it correctly, and maybe you could try to tell us a bit also about trust and reputation systems because I think this is also a key component in how we collaborate. Because why would I want to work with others? Why? Yeah, I need a common goal, but I also need to trust and build a reputation, and my efforts need to to be valued somehow. It's not always about the monetary value. It's also about like, do people see my work and appreciate it? Is it creating some form of reputation? Uh, so yes, uh, my, my question is if you can please also try to look a bit about reputation systems and uh, how this can uh, to work with organic governance. <laughs> yeah, so you see, and here is again what I'm encountering uh, in our discussion, yes? So I think it's very important to clarify a lot of things, yes? Including yes. the questions. So I'm not sure what your question is. Do you want me just to preach to you now about trust? Do you want me to <laughs> answer something in the context of Catalyst? So you see, phrasing the questions also uh, is like kind of framing the conversation either for clarity or yes. for so, so so don't worry don't worry i'm, I'm going to try to translate your question <laughs> but if i know please <laughs> correct me right yes. i think your question refers to uh, 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 and i do not know because trust is a very uh, complex uh, issue right and, and so so are you asking about do we trust Catalyst as a process, as a system? Do we trust the designers of Catalyst or do we, do we trust our peers with who we work in Catalyst or do we trust the people who set proposals? Uh, so what is the question? 
Yes. For example, let's take uh, reviewers uh, as peers, uh, the mm -hmm. advisors and the veteran advisors. So the question is if we trust the reviewers. Yes, over time. So what if there's um, someone, bad actor, a bad reviewer who just wants the rewards and doesn't care about the work? Mm -hmm. He will just put in a lot of uh, bad reviews and maybe it will be reviewed by a veteran advisor, but maybe there's also a bad veteran advisor. So we need some form of reputation system to, to handle this, I guess is my way of looking at it. So in your frame, it's the peers, like how, how do we, or do we need this reputation system for, for uh, peers? And how do we go about uh, looking at that? And maybe you can share some knowledge about these reputation systems? Uh, well, I, I will answer the best I can because this is also, <laughs> as I mentioned, uh, quite complex. And I will just share my screen because the most recent and I think most valid uh, information which I got in this regard is related to governance tokens or voting, you know, related to voting and, and DAOs. And this is a recent report. I just wonder if you know about it. This is a, a report from SingularityNet which is oh, a decentralization sure. report. Are oh. you aware of this? No, I will definitely read this. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm bringing it to the fore because uh, I'm just wondering if our community knows about it. So Singularity Net, which is our partner, yes, with Cardano and they're implementing a Cardano. Um, they are also looking at uh, lessons learned to learn from our Catalyst project and they have their own funding which was inspired by Catalyst, which is named Deep Funding. I don't know if you know, and many of our community members are sending proposals to both. Those which are more uh, oriented to artificial intelligence go into the deep funding. And that's an experiment as well. And I think we can learn from each other here. Yeah. So they have uh, uh, developed, I mean, they have uh, studied, obviously. It's not an answer, it doesn't have answers yet clear answers, but I think it addresses a few of your questions regarding trust, yes, and reputation. And I'm going to go deeper into that in a second. I just wanted first to bring your attention here. So that and DAOs, yeah, uh, governance and, and voting are interrelated. Why? Because actually through voting, I, uh, voting is this collective action in which I'm working with my peers to put my contribution there to spend the treasury, the collective good, uh, in the best possible way for everyone, hopefully. Although, of course, maybe some of us are biased and we want to spend it in the best possible way for our own interest. And who knows what that interest is? There may be, and this depends on how we set up the system. The, the, the mechanism of the system, for example, if I'm getting only rewarded for voting and not for reviewing or for other kind of work or for actually looking at the higher interest of the let's say swarm, let's call it like that, yeah. uh, uh, then the system will behave accordingly and people are going to game the system the best they can in order for their advantage. No matter if I really want Cardano to be the DeFi blockchain. And uh, I'd like and I would invite everyone to look here at the various fallacies which are discussed uh, one by one in this report, one token, one vote, of course, that enables the whales to have the biggest say, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's with one wallet, one vote, I can still game the system and create many wallets. If it's, you know, the, uh, or other voting uh, systems, uh, they are all, none of them is without fallacy. But how do we combine and mix and match them? In order to achieve the purpose of governance, which I'm even not, sure that we are clear about. Governance is about coordinating action, coordinated action and decision-making in our case here, yes? And how do we coordinate this action in order to make the best decisions it is our quest right now. And the act of voting in this context of Catalyst is to take this collective action to decide on how to spend the treasury. Right. Yes. So now I'd like to um, actually, if you allow me, just to to go to another of these uh, slides to continue with your uh, 
uh, I want to not know how to call it with um, with your question or quest for for trust and reputation. <laughs> That's a very it's, wide question, so I, I exactly. understand. Exactly, but uh, it's also it has some answer in uh, the same report. I would say, you know, just to point uh, people in the right direction, and of course, and we will see. Everybody will find the answers according to what they consider would be the best uh, the best way to do so in this case also in the report there is a discussed yes this reputation weighted voting which you refer to and you say well how do we actually enable people let's say people with expertise whatever expertise in DeFi let's say Let, let's take the, the real Fi example which is amazing because real Fi is kind of is definitely a new approach right and being a new approach well who is an expert in whatever is new right I mean uh, we can say okay so everybody's an expert we get an idea of what it is but of course there are people who have more experience in with financial systems and with credit scoring and with with all the, the mechanisms there that are necessary in order to uh, deploy what we would call um, let's say an overall integrity index that we can calculate mathematically, if you want, yes, mm -hmm. uh, based on people's behavior, track record and so on and so forth, which actually is, yeah, we call it like verifiable integrity index. Now in DAOs and with blockchain, we can actually track people's <clears throat> behavior and, and people's good, um, let's say track record as we call it. Uh, we can also put their referrals from others. Yes, so I'm like, okay, so we have put referrals, uh, an integrity index with referrals or a reputation index, uh, their credit score, their certified credentials. So, you know, so you kind of, I do not know. I didn't know you're going to choose the real FI project, uh, the real FI example, but yeah, credit score is also important. And their expertise, yes, through diplomas and whatever certification. Yeah, so, much. so so in the paper which I uh, which you refer to uh, by my uh, PhD student uh, Zainab Nouriar, she actually um, we did a um, review of all the systems available. Yes, there are many systems, and you can go to that paper and find it. Um, uh, I do not even know if I no, I don't have it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is a presentation which I which I've done for something else. So yes. so. Um, but the paper is called uh, Trust and Reputation, so people can contact me and the, or they can find it online. Uh, maybe you can feature it somehow uh, in the comments of this recording. Uh, in that paper, we have done studies and there are many systems that can calculate that, but singularity is what I wanted to say. They have their own methodology and they are doing math mathematically, they are calculating this uh, uh, overall reputation index for everyone, you know. So, through various parameters. And don't forget, they are AI experts. So I think they are a good partner for us. Also, they are looking at the vulnerabilities of uh, reputation, which I think is what you were complaining about in gaming the system and how the system was exactly. gamed by, uh, yes. So, um, and, and that is of course, yes, then you can vote just to get rewards or you can vote just for your friends and downvote uh, those who you don't like. I mean, there are so many subjective things in which you can, uh, by which you can also, or you can down uh, uh, the reputation score of a person for totally arbitrary reason, for no reason at all, just to uh, reduce their influence. So oh, and there are many more. There are many more uh, issues to tackle here. But you know, I just wanted. I hope I, I kind of addressed uh, addressed the challenges that you uh, yeah. were trying to, to 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 set with your question. Let me try to frame it uh, into the context. So, um, in my understanding, then um, we, all of these organic systems uh, they need to have some form of like um, pushback or some form of boundaries. So everyone have their own self-interest and uh, some part of it to align to a shared purpose. But you need to have some form of system also though, so that if many uh, misbehave or misalign or do something, the system itself needs good rules so, so that you cannot game the system itself. So even in uh, this very like uh, uh, benev benevolent systems, I will say, like where you have a kind shared purpose, you still need to have some form of framework uh, 
uh, and some form of working rules. And for me, I see these reputation systems as one part of this equation to solve this, like what are the working rules to, to collaborate? And um, the, what you showed is really, really a wonderful overview of um, how um, we can start to think about different type of reputation systems. Because for example, you mentioned that we could uh, could like make a reputation of some person bad, like by don't voting them or something. So so the the system that creates this scores, it needs to uh, understand this type of behavior and then be able to to counter it. And uh, what you align there with some hard rules and some uh, soft rules, they they all try to achieve this. Like look at all of the different challenges of creating a reputation system, and then how how to deal with it. <laughs> Okay, so do you have any more questions? Oh, sorry. Yes, I just had to frame it. So my next um, question is, um, do you think um, uh, governance, uh, organic governance in, in, uh, in practice can uh, be implemented uh, as we look at now? Like, for example, are there some, uh, and this you will have to interpret it, but are there some um, some challenges or some like forces that, keeps us from collaborating in these types of way. For example, in democracies, are there some uh, reasons why some try to hold for power and uh, how they will, um, um, in a voting uh, situation, for example, how, how do they um, uh, try to, to, uh, to influence, to keep in power by, by those who vote? And is this like ideal or is there so much more potential if we can find other ways of leadership, like uh, where it's not only uh, in a single time that you are the leader, but it's more fluid because all of these systems will have uh, opinion leaders, they, they will have uh, project uh, leaders, they will, they, there will be some form of leadership positions in all of these systems. So uh, could you maybe try to uh, look at that question and see if you can Frame it in a oh, way. So if, I, okay, so if I understand the question, I think <laughs> let's say broadly speaking, your question is about power struggle, power structures, and how actually these power struggle structures enable the system to be gained or to be more fair in or whatever that is. Uh, is this more or less what you? Were... Uh, yes, exactly. Okay, so. Um, May I, I will just share the screen again because, you know, so um, how do you structure your system, your, let's say, collective system? Yes. Uh, the structure determines or has sometimes inside itself the power games. Yeah. So that's why I call these power structures. Yes. So let's take the top down autocratic institution, right, in which there is a, a boss or a king or a CEO or <laughs> you name it. A hierarchy. Uh, which, yes, the hierarchy, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and, and let's uh, take also the network, which is the peer production system of Catalyst, which we, at least we are trying to create. That is my hope. I do not know. Yes, it's, <laughs> uh, it's not in my power. But so far, Catalyst is, um, is a community project, as much as it also is through its design. So the design of the Catalyst structure is in the hands of IOG, right? So um, maybe sometimes these tensions, and I like the tensions because from the tensions, we can come up with solutions and emergence of the right rules, which we were talking about. But just to explain the tensions, there is a tension between Catalyst itself and maybe the designers of Catalyst. Yeah, because of our conversation is, yeah, it's kind of clear that you have some pain points, right? That we can improve Catalyst, but who can improve Catalyst? Can the community actually go in and code Catalyst and improve it as they want? Yes or no? That's a really good question. Like, uh, sh can we um, help change the, the, um, the way we do voting structures? And uh, like- I am asking you. Yeah. Um, Say I don't know if you don't know, which is yeah, honest. I, I would. I, I guess my best answer would be like currently the power keys are in IOHK. They are the ones who decide okay. that list. Okay. So yeah. let's say in that case, yes, we have the Catalyst community, the sphere production system, <clears throat> and we have IOG. I do not know. The IOG is also it's not 
uh, top-down organization, right? It's obvious, yeah. So uh, at least uh, from uh, my experience, yes. Of course, uh, uh, Charles is our. Um, what can I say? <laughs> at least for me, yes. I I I, I see Charles as something divine, <laughs> and and I respect him and and admire him a lot, right? So I'm very proud and and happy to to have the opportunity to work at IOG uh, with that in mind. And, and actually, obviously, I'm here. So he being also the catalyst of our community, I think that's wonderful, right? However, because of the simple fact that our community does not have the opportunity to, let's say, code, how do we do the voting or whatever, or maybe they do, I do not know. You couldn't answer, you said you don't know, but you are interested in that and complaining about that, which also says something about our community at large and let's look at it straight in the eyes. Yes, so maybe yeah. it's something also about us and our own accountability here. Let me finish this and then, then <laughs> justify myself or whatever, or mm. protest. So we have, let's say, yeah, uh, an institution which is going to the community and let's say I'm going now and, and asking you as a member of, a, a, as a leader of an SPO or I'm going to, who knows, the Swarm or Cardano for Climate and say, take me to your leader. I want to talk to someone representative <laughs> of this community. And because this is a community, yes, they will then scratch their heads and say, wow, which leader? Because we are a community and we make common decisions. And this is now very nicely reflected in how the Cardano Foundation has set up the summit because they allow the community to actually decide who is presenting at the summit, which is, again, a wonderful experiment. But let's see, yes, <laughs> how, how mm -hmm. will we, if we will be happy at the end. So it's still a learning process. On the other side, let's say the community goes to input out and then said no i don't i'm i'm, I'm not happy we are we are not happy with this, a few decisions here on, on how voting is done and how it can be gamed and so on and so forth and then they say let's change it as yeah as you are saying we don't know how but let's say we can or we want so let's say let's let's do this let's change the voting structure let's do it more with the integrity index or whatever and then they say you come to me and i'm going to IG. And well, someone will have to authorize it. So it's not like you can just change it like that. And I think well, that's, that's why you don't important. know. Yeah. Okay. So these are these are the clashes which are normal clashes between uh, even if IoT yes would be differently structured yes as a as a company, uh, it will have to have some accountability. Which of course also a community, but the accountability in the community is spread more among its members. While here it is probably, yeah, it will be Charles accountable. So we have to understand mm -hmm. also the tensions with which uh, 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 they have to make a decision in this regard. And that's why Charles was saying, peer, peer research. I want to be sure that what I implement in Cardano is really good. So if we go to him, oh, I want this voting and that voting and other solution, he will send it to the researchers and he will say, okay, tell me and prove to me that this is going to work and if not, do me some better solution. This is what is happening. And maybe very few people from our community know about this or look at it from this perspective of the power structure and or power structures. So, so you know, so there are there are many <laughs> kinds of power structures, and they are all structured by the conventions of coordination. But one important thing which I would like to show you is that actually it doesn't matter in the context of voting. Let's say yes. Once <laughs> that it can be a dictatorship or a community like Catalyst. In order to maintain power, which you were actually asking about, yes, mm. there are some rules. And if you ever look more carefully, which I didn't, yeah, but I would be very interested to look and to, <laughs> to do some research on that because I'm an academic and say, and this is an amazing experiment with which we can work, like 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 researchers and academic, yeah, it's like. So let's say if the community, now I'm creating my own swarm or Cardano for climate or SPO or, you know, uh, real fi yeah. And I want real fi as a project to succeed. And because the treasury is kind of limited, and as you say, there are uh, there's limited amount of funds, which is given to every call and so on and so forth. Yes. I want somehow people on my side in order to have the real five projects funded. 
and these are the rules. So take those things. So keep key supporters on your side. Which are the key supporters? Depends. Yeah, you will have to think about Catalyst. I'm going to give you some example now from our old uh, tested uh, systems in the world, which are dictatorship and and uh, democracies, right? <laughs> so, so they are, un unfortunately, in order to maintain power and to achieve what you want, let's say, even with the real fight, uh, making it the uh, main thing in, uh, uh, in Cardano, you will need to play the same game, unfortunately. Yes, and we're trying to look at other games which are more productive. There is much more uh, here. If you go to YouTube, at the Rules for Rulers, it's an animation. <laughs> I really um, commend you to do that. I really, really, really uh, encourage you to do that, actually, not commend you, <laughs> encourage you to do that. <clears throat> So, and, and how this works is, for example, in a democracy, yes, which are the, the, key, uh, the keys to power? In a, um, in a democracy, they, they can be the lawyers, the, um, of course, the army, mm. uh, yes, uh, the, those who make the laws, which can either support the current president or not. He doesn't have anything to do. I mean, the lawyers are making the, the, the laws, the Department of Justice, and then the police, which is actually enforcing the rule and the law, right? So you will need these three, uh, uh, three systems, which we call keys to power. power yes, yeah. so we have the army, and you mentioned that, yes, the, the lawyers and the police, right? These are the minimal, minimal, minimal key to power. And no matter... Uh, who is implementing that? Let's say I can be the dean of a university or a president or, you know, um, any kind of organization, a CEO of a successful or of a big uh, company, you will need this kind of uh, keys to powers in your organization in order to maintain power. And this is just one example but it's for dictatorship, but it works for everything. <clears throat> in a dictatorship, the, how it works, of course, the power the whole of the power is about how you distribute the treasury. And that's why what actually we are doing here with Catalyst is such an important exercise. It can really change the world. It can really change governance. So what it means, the dictatorship works like that. So it minimizes the key to power, doesn't give anything to the people, and only gives rewards to those keys in order to keep the person in power. So they can make the right laws that would disempower the individuals and empower the ruler. Mm. Uh, they, the police would then protect the ruler and of course the army as well, protect uh, the country, the ruler and so on and so forth. This is how it functions. The democracy, as I mentioned, has many keys and that's the only difference, but it operates unfortunately with the same way. So you have here ministries of agriculture, someone who takes care of natural resources and so on and so forth, but and they each have a say. And let's say people will have a say as well in uh, electing uh, these officials who are going to create committees. And let's say in that, uh, when you said Holonic or Holakas, you, know, you just have a, a still a hierarchy, that, but it's more nested and you have people there. But inside each circle, inside each committee, you will have someone who will want to keep their power in how they actually manage the treasury in oh, any government system. And yeah. that is this treasury, yeah? That's what we do here. But the, as I was saying, it's the same power game. And just to explain it quickly. And you can, of course, look at the, uh, the video. But So the thing is, the power is the following. In a democracy, people are being kept relatively happy. Yeah, you create roads and universities and so on and educate them. You know, the, why? The only purpose is for to have them produce, yes? To put money in the treasury. And this money, then you give to your keys to the lawyers, to the, yes, the police and so on, but you also give to the people to keep them producing in order to increase the treasure. I will not refer to catalyst, <laughs> but you know, you can make your own uh, uh, analogies here. The, the problem with any power structures are like, for example, in a democracy, the worst case is when actually that uh, ruler is only relying on natural resources and not on people at all. So he doesn't have any interest to give anything to the people because the treasury comes from the, selling the natural resources. Yes. And then he just keeps the keys, 
yeah, this uh, keys to power happy. They, he pays only them and people go poorer and poorer and he doesn't care. That's the worst ca case of a, of a dictatorship. But the game is very similar, yes, in order to maintain power and so on. So, uh, and of course, in a dictatorship, the less you give to the people, the more you will have for yourself. So his interest is not to, sorry, not to, not to do this. Yeah, I just want to please the keys of power, not the people. Uh... Exactly, exactly. So I think, you know, um, it's, a, it's a pretty complex issue, this one, how to manage power. And from what I see, you know, um, Charles expressed many times that, yes, I mean, we learned, and, and from my quest as well, yes, we learned from history how to maintain, how to keep power and how to take power. But we don't have too much experience in how to relinquish power, yeah. how to give it to the people, how to empower people, and then what will happen? Will it be chaos? Or can we actually slowly, slowly create a transition in which we can have people enable uh, this taking of power um, swiftly and productively so we can actually all achieve our goals and be happy. So far, it hasn't been done. And that's why, yeah, Charles, I think he is in the same dilemma, how to relinquish, how to relinquish. I mean, he created this amazing, amazing project, yes, Cardano. Mm -hmm. And he wants to make it the best blockchain in the known universe. I know that. He has this at his heart, at his goal. I, I know as well, yeah. And the question is, he wants to give the power to the, to, to, to the community. Let's help him. I don't have an answer. I'm still looking for it. And if you do have, that's great. But I think this conversation is about inspiring each other and understanding. Yeah. And I will stay available to you all for such further conversations in which I'd like to hear your opinions more and, and see how we can... Uh, Work it's, together on that. it's actually a really great answer because it inspires me like uh how can we create more keys to power so that we can distribute the power more to the edges as charles always talking about but how do we do this uh like in a way that doesn't create chaos as you showed in your slides as well like we, it needs to be done gradually and together with the community and gradually releasing more and more responsibility together uh, that's that's my take on it really uh but but i think we don't provide the answers in this discussion. We more provide the inspiration for others in the community to look at this question and also share their experience on this. Uh, this is these are tough questions, and these are very wide, wide-reaching questions. So I really thank you, Mihela, for trying to to answer this and framing it in useful ways. Uh, I think this is uh, something many in the community should engage in more and have this type of discussions. And, and uh, I'm so happy to be a part, you know, of this experiment. I mean, this is so amazing. It, I, it, it's a dream come true for me, as you mentioned, that all my life I was after this quest. And I realized that it's not easy. I would give you the answer now and the recipe. Okay, let's do it better. <laughs> but, it, you know, it depends. In each instance is different, as you have seen, yes. And, um, and therefore, let's keep the conversation going and help Charles help us and help our and and help us help ourselves help us help us yeah i think if there's a one help us help ourselves we will help charles as well and everybody will achieve this goal with cardano so um uh, thank you so much for taking this time Mihela. uh i think we'll uh, we'll end it there that's uh, three wide questions and a lot of new questions generated so maybe if the audience who's listening to this have other questions could they send some questions or discuss Mihela? is that some possibility absolutely let's let them send questions and we will have a subsequent recording to answer the questions and maybe if I can, I will be very happy to participate in the summit uh, when this is being uh, played. One. So then afterwards, maybe I can take questions uh, on the spot from yeah. the community. We will notify the community when they're watching this if Mihela has the time or possibility to, to attend. So you will know if she is there to, to answer your questions. So with that, uh, thank you so much, Mihela, and thank you thank for your you. time. And let's end the recording then.